Hi, my name is Darcy Elks, and I'd like to thank you for joining me for this five-part series that we're going to be offering on inclusive post-secondary education. Inclusive post-secondary education has been a real passion of mine for years, and in fact, I was involved in the establishment of the very first initiative uh, in Canada many years ago. And I continue to be a consultant and to work very hard on inclusive post-secondary education opportunities uh, for um, people throughout the state of Pennsylvania. In this series, we're going to talk about inclusive post-secondary education and offer to you some information that's very helpful when you are uh, designing a program or implementing a program, or if you just want to know more about inclusive post-secondary education. So thank you very much for attending and I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to share with you today some information that is very helpful in um, starting such initiatives to guide our efforts to establish, uh, develop, and operate um, an inclusive post-secondary education program. This topic is also very personal to me because I have a daughter with an intellectual disability who was determined to go to university after she finished high school. And I will be sharing more with you about her story. But accompanying her on that journey as she attended university convinced me that the opportunity to attend university and college should be made available for all students. So this presentation, I want to start with uh, a little bit of the history of inclusive post-secondary edu education. It's really interesting to contemplate that universities and colleges have been around for a couple of hundred years, and it's honestly very recently, about 35 to 40 years ago, that the idea of creating possibilities for people with intellectual disabilities to attend colleges and universities has taken place. And note that even today, although uh, you know we've been working on it in this country and other countries as well, less than 5% of university and colleges throughout the United States have post-secondary inclusive initiatives and programs. Let me tell you a little bit about our uh, consortium here in Pennsylvania. The consortium is uh, funded from a federal grant uh, that is called TIPSIT, which stands for Transition and Post-Secondary Programs for Students with Intellectual Disabilities. Our purpose really is to promote and support. Promote and support what? Well, first of all, authentic uh, inclusive post-secondary education. In other words, promoting and supporting um, campuses to provide the same opportunities and experiences for students with intellectual disabilities that all students have available to them. Promoting and supporting inclusion, where students are not only on campus and physically present, but truly participate and belong. Thirdly, uh, the TIPSIT grant has assisted initiatives in our state that have been um, operating for a while to grow and be able to accept more students. And we've also assisted a number of initiatives to start up. In the state of Pennsylvania, the post-secondary higher education options for students has grown quite a bit. Um, and I just wanna show you this membership ma map. This is, these are the members that are part of our consortium. In 2015, there were three programs in operation and now our consortium membership is 29 um, universities and colleges with nine programs that have been developed in the last five years of the grant. The options for post-secondary inclusive higher education are expanding across our country, which is really exciting news. Uh, and students with um, intellectual and developmental disabilities are starting to think differently about their futures. So instead of going to the segregated, congregated day programs or staying in sc high school uh, through the age of 21 or just staying at home, students are embracing a vision 
of going to university and college and furthering their education. In Pennsylvania, Millersville University has developed actually a model program of inclusive post-secondary education, and uh, the name of the program is Integrated Studies. And it started with one student uh, very intentionally so that the founders could really learn how to support students well, uh, how to help students to become embedded in university culture. And as well, the founders of this program wanted to make sure uh, that they learned how students in integrated studies could in fact have an excellent education and be fully embedded in the university life. So from one student, uh, this initiative now has grown to 35 students. It is important um, to understand that inclusive post-secondary education started um, be about 35, 40 years ago in Canada with a vision. Uh, a vision that young people and their parents had of a different future for life after high school than what was currently being offered. And as young people saw their brothers and sisters going off to college and university and technical schools, they asked the question, well, why can't I do that too? And so together, young people and their families joined with some very progressive professionals uh, and inclusive post-secondary education programs were started. Uh, having um, a definition of vision is very relevant for the grounding, I think, of not only the past or the first programs that were started, but the programs that we um, offer today. Vision is the ability to perceive something that's not actually visible through mental acuteness or foresight. It is indeed the power of imagination. And when those first initiatives started, they were in the imaginations of the young people and their families and the professionals um, and members of the university community who joined together to create those programs. They could actually see what did not yet exist. Or as Jonathan Swift puts it, they could see the invisible. And not only did they have the vision, but they had the dream, the vision, and a commitment to make that vision or that dream come true. So if we think about the definition here of vision, you can see how it's still very relevant for the work that we're doing today as we develop and establish inclusive post-secondary initiatives. We hope that this series inspires you to really grab a hold of that vision and that you really be excited and want to make a commitment to make this vision come true in many more different places. The vision of inclusive post-secondary education was rooted in dreams of a larger vision of a full, a meaningful, and inclusive life in all of the different life spheres. And this is, uh, you know, the kind of vision that most people have for themselves as they're starting out uh, in their young adult life journey. So having a full, meaningful, inclusive life within your homes, uh, where you choose to live, your neighborhoods, your relationships, your work, and not just a work uh, life, but actually developing a career. Um, your personal growth and learning and development, your spiritual life, your involvement in your community, the ways you have fun uh, and the ways you express yourself creatively. This vision of having a full, meaningful, inclusive life in all of these different life, spe life spheres was absolutely radical uh, back in the 70s when inclusive post-secondary education was first started. At that time, many people with intellectual disabilities were in institutions uh, or in day programs or residential programs within their community, and they were not really thought of as being uh, capable to participate in a variety of valued social roles within their 
uh, within their communities and their societies. It wasn't even, you know, part of uh, a lot of people's thinking that people with intellectual disabilities would be able to work within the regular workforce, study within the regular universities and colleges and technical schools, that they would be able to participate in a variety of valued roles um, uh, for, you know, having fun within their community. For example, being a member of the Y, being a member of a health club, being uh, a member, an active member of uh, local governmental organizations and so forth. But there were advocates all the way along who held that vision and slowly things began to change. So inclusive education began to become more a part of the school system in grades kindergarten through 12. Um, we supported employment was developed where we started to see people working within the regular workforce and engaging in many different kinds of uh, work uh, opportunities very successfully and contributing to the workforce. And people be becoming members of uh, community organizations and uh, buying their own homes and living in their own homes. And this was all movement. Uh, forward to really make the vision that I referred to um, a reality. Part of that vision, of course, includes inclusive post-secondary uh, education. One very interesting fact that has been proven by a number of studies is that students with intellectual disabilities who attended inclusive post-secondary education programs were more than twice as likely to be employed as their counterparts who had not attended college, university, or technical schools. And as well, this is a pretty interesting fact, uh, individuals with intellectual disabilities who had a post-secondary education earned $406 more per month than their counterparts who had not attended uh, college or university or technical school. So this information shows us, you know, that in terms of your work life and having a career, it's very beneficial to in fact have, to have the, had the opportunity to attend an inclusive post-secondary um, program. And of course, that is part of, I think, all young people's vision for a good life, that they would be able to work, they would be able to earn a living so that they could support themselves. Think College, an organization that has provided lots of information and also does studies around inclusive post-secondary education here in the United States, tells us that in 2020, there were 295 non-degree programs on university and college campuses across the country, which offers students the opportunity to take college classes, to engage in career development and independent living activities and participate in the social life of the university. So the vision of inclusive post-secondary education has indeed come to life. I want to share with you some um, pictures of my daughter's experience. She went to Westchester University in Westchester, Pennsylvania. There's a very interesting um, story about how she ended up deciding that she wanted to go to university. Our daughter has always been fully included in regular um, education classes. And for high school, she went to a charter school. And the charter of that school was that every student would, um, upon graduation, do some kind of post-secondary um, study. And so... To help their students to prepare to do that, the school would take the kids on all kinds of field trips. And so Mary had visited many different um, college campuses, uh, university campuses, she's visited technical school. So when we got together uh, to put together Mary's plan for what she was going to do after high school, um, at her meeting, she boldly stated that she wanted to go to university. And I think that surprised everybody who was sitting at the meeting, although I don't think it should have. Maybe they had been assuming she might do something other than go to university, but Mary was very determined that she was going to go to university despite the fact that the high school uh, said, and actually tried to encourage her 
to go to the the graduation ceremony and then the following fall return to the high school to continue taking classes and reading and math. And Mary said, I've done that. I don't want to come back to school. I want to go to university. And so together we worked um, with the school, with our daughter, to make this a reality in her life. She was very clear she wanted to go to Westchester University. And at that point in time, Westchester University did not have uh, a formalized um, program for inclusive post-secondary education. Westchester University was very open and worked with us, and Mary was able to register as a non-matriculated student. She attended university for four years, uh, three of those years with some funding from the school district, which helped greatly to cover some of the cost of the um, tuition. It was a great time in Mary's life and she loved it. When Mary came home from the first day of university, she walked in the door, she looked at her dad and I and she said, this is the life, this is the life. Mary loves theater and so she decided to really focus on theater for her first two years of study and so you see Mary in in acting class. As time went on, she began to um, start to, to, to take other courses and actually the last two years of university, she focused on health. One of the courses she really enjoyed was personal defense and she learned a lot in personal defense. So it was very practical and very helpful for her in her life. Of course, uh, being able to just hang out at the student center and do your studying and talk with other students uh, is a big part of the student life. And so Mary just loved going to the, the student center and participating in activities there, studying there and meeting new people. Another big part of university, of course, is uh, going out with your friends and having a good time with them uh, and meeting lots of different people. Uh, you know, the, from all over the place who are interested in lots of different things. And so uh, these are some of the friends that Mary made, and um, this was one of the nights that they were out on campus having a great time together. Internships, of course, are a very important part of the career path, and Mary really wanted to work in theater. And so along with her theater classes, she was able to get an internship at a, a local theater where she studied all the different components of theater. Mary at one point thought that she wanted to teach young children. And so when she was in university, she got a job working as a teacher's assistant for the summer. After the summer was over, Mary said, I do not want to work with young children. Well, that's part of your experience in life, trying different jobs, right? To figure out what you do want to do and what you don't want to do. Mary had um, several part-time jobs while she was in university. Um, this is another one, another job she had working for a small family-run organization that made and sold green products for the home and for the body. She learned how to make soap. Uh, she learned how to arrange soaps. Uh, in order and to pack and label products to be mailed. Um, she went to Whole Foods and on Saturdays and handed out um, samples of the different soap. And so she learned a lot of the elements, not only of making the products, but of businesses. Another part-time job that Mary had uh, when she was in university was teaching and speaking and sharing her experiences in university and helping people to understand how much she had learned and grown um, and how, that, how these experiences were helping her to move into her next step of life. Mary finished university when she was 21. And here she is at, a, at her 21st birthday celebrating, finishing university and launching into the next step of her young adult life. Now I wanna share some photographs from um, Temple University of some students and their participation uh, on campus. And as you're looking at these and as you heard Mary's story, you might say, well, what's the big deal? Uh, all university do, students do this. Well, the big deal is that for years, 
the opportunities to participate in the ways that you're seeing on these slides were just not available to students with intellectual disabilities. So again, here you see the students uh, studying and attending different cultural events together. These are three students who are studying music and dance. Uh, and then going out with your friends, you know, is such a huge part of going to university, college, technical school, where you meet all different kinds of people and you have lots of opportunities to do different things together uh, and learn from each other. And this is uh, again on Tam Temple's campus with the mascot, the owl. And of course, attending all kinds of social events on campus, like going to homecoming, going to the football game at homecoming. And again, uh, you know, do, here's a picture of a student doing an internship. Uh, this is a student who is very interested in working in recreation or sp the sports area after graduating. So is now doing an internship uh, with campus recreation. So this is the conclusion of the first module of this series. I hope that it, the presentation has encouraged you to think about the values and vision that really are so important to inclusive post-secondary education. In the next module, we will start to talk about how do we take the vision and values and put them into action.